Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today we have something a bit different in store for you. Today's deck is called Blitz Gurney and is an ideal deck for this month's seasonal mode. It's the season of the Draconid and with every season comes a seasonal mode with a specific rule set. This season we basically have Blitz Gwent. Every player has 15 seconds to perform their redraws and only 8 seconds to complete each turn. Keeping in mind the animations of the characters and cards, this basically gives you 2 to mostly 4 actions to perform every turn. Which is not a lot. So we're looking for a leader with not that many interactions. Gurney Korra of the Monsters faction is maybe not the most ideal choice in this regard, but she, yes I said she, allows us to set up a deck that otherwise doesn't require much more interaction to work. The Blitz Gurney deck is a classic Tribe based deck. Thrive is a keyword that boosts any units that have it by 1 every time you play a unit with a higher power than the Thrive unit. This means that usually we start with a few low level Thrive units upping the power while you're going through the round setting up the board with lots of Thrive units before you start playing your high power units, which this deck actually has a lot of. Let's start with Gurney Koral's ability. If there's not one on your side of the board at the start of your turn, Gurney allows you to spawn one of her fruits. The fruits are leeches that have Thrive and start at 1 power. They can be used as an extra Thrive unit or destroyed by certain other units to offset their friendly fire. We'll get to those in a second. Let's discuss the Thrive flow first. In an ideal Thrive round, which is usually round 1, you start with Neckers and a fruit. The Necker spawns a copy of itself and has the same abilities as the fruit. 1 power and try. Starting with this, you have 3 tribe units in 1 go, but they're fragile, so keep that in mind. After the Nekkers, we need a 2 power unit, ideally the Drowning. With 2 power in Thrive, it's nothing special, but it can also damage an enemy by 2 and move it to its other row. Handy for rogue specific threats. The Wyvern is next, with 3 power, Thrive, and the ability to do 2 damage from the range row. Finally, the Necker Warrior has 4 power and Thrive as well. If you've been counting, this would net you 24 points after 4 cards, assuming your opponent didn't damage anything. Nothing spectacular, but Thrive is about the long game. A fifth unit can be the Barbagazi or Netral, both have 5 powers, both have 5 power, netting you 35 points on the board. Next up is the Katakan, which has 6 power and is our final Thrive unit. It also spawns a 2 power Akimara, so that brings our point total to 49 after 6 cards. Finish up with Old Spear Tip with 9 power and Count Caldwell at 10 power and you end up with 82 points after 8 cards, which is pretty sweet. On top of this, this means you don't need to think too much about your play, allowing you to be point efficient even though you have very little time to decide your next move. Remember, you only have 8 seconds in seasonal mode, which is a lot less than you might think. In your second round, you would most likely have less Thrive units left to set up, so start with what you have or play your high rollers immediately, depending on your remaining card count. A few high power cards benefit from the fruits as well. Hugo Boombreaker is new from the Novigrad expansion and forces you to damage a random ally by 3 when you play him. He has a whopping 10 power though, so he's definitely worth it, and if you play a fruit at the very start and play him first, he takes out the fruit guaranteed, which you can refresh in the next turn anyway. You can do the same with the 8 power Griffin, which forces you to destroy an ally on the row it is played on, and the Ghoul allows you to consume a bronze unit from your graveyard, which should ideally be the 8 power Griffin, boosting the Ghoul up to 9. Thrive triggers after the consume, so the Ghoul can potentially trigger all your Thrive units on the board. Osrael is similar, but is not limited to bronze cards and can even consume units from your opponent's graveyard, providing you with more targets. You might be wondering why Karantir is included in this deck. He allows you to summon a copy of a unit from your hand next to him that sets its power to 1. But we actually need high power units, so this seems kinda useless. It is, if you don't have something to revert that 1 power. We do have a few options though. You could simply reset it using spores, giving you up to 9 points if you reset Hugo or Caldwell, or you can use Tatterwing, another new addition from the latest expansion. That the wing allows you to destroy an allied unit but boosts itself by the base power of the destroyed unit. Emphasis on base power. You can put a 1 power Pugo on the board with Karantir and then destroy it with Tatterwing to boost it to a whopping 16 points, again triggering Thrive after the consume. 
You can also use Static Wing as a finisher when your opponent has started to damage one of your high power units, basically negating any damage done to that specific unit. With all the high power units on our side of the field, we also have some nice finishers aside from Tatter Wing. Umnerit's Wrath allows you to damage an enemy by the power of your highest unit, which can be a massive 16 point blow. And finally, Geralt Igni can destroy the highest units on an enemy row if the point total on that row is 20 or higher. This can be game changing, so keep an eye on your opponent's board for opportunities to use Igni. Since you both have less time to act, your opponent also has less time to keep the power levels of all their units different to avoid this. The benefit of this deck is that almost all turns only require one or two actions, limiting the amount of mistakes you'll make when trying to rush it. Some of the UI and control quirks of this game can really cause some major issues in the seasonal mode though. Animations usually need to play out in full before you can perform another action, and targeted actions sometimes default to the wrong target as damage is done to your own units or boosts are applied to your opponent's units. There's also a small bug at the moment, at least on consoles, that when you use a targeted ability with multiple charges, the target disappears when you only have a few seconds left, and the action is performed anyway on a random target when the timer runs out. For that reason, it might be more interesting to swap out the Barbagazi for a Seleno Harpy instead, since it only has one action tied to it. Geralt Igni can also be replaced by Geralt Urden instead, if you want to focus more on resetting than destroying, but that is entirely up to you. All in all, I'm having a blast with Speed Gwent and I hope this Blitz Gurney deck might help you out in enjoying it as well. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Season of the Draconid and the Blitz Gurney deck. Got any other ideas on how to improve this deck or awesome plays in Blitz Gwent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. Any feedback is greatly appreciated as always. Check me out on Twitter at at TrophyNet, so that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk and if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!